Um, so it's really good to see all of you. Um, today's topic is summary versus synthesis. It's a part of the writing a literature review skill builder series. Um, I'm going to share my screen so that you all can see the visual component that accompanies this. And then I'll just jump right into it. Let's do this. Okay. Um, if you can see my screen, put a one in the chat. Great, great, okay. So my name is Imani Yangbe. Uh, I'm the program coordinator for the Center for Writing and Speaking uh, in Campbell G14, which is where I am now. Um, feel free to come see me at any time, and I at any time between 8 a.m. and 4:30 p.m. And hopefully, I'll be in my office. Um, if you have any questions about anything, I'll uh, share with you today. So we're talking about summary versus synthesis. Um, so going forward, I'll be discussing uh, summary. Uh, I'll do that pretty quickly. Right? I'll, I'll define it for you, tell you about the features of a good summary, why it's important, and how you can incorporate it into your literature review. Then I'll talk to you about synthesis. And that's where I'll spend the bulk uh, of the time discussing the features of a good synthesis and approaches to writing a synthesis. And then I'll show you a sample um, analysis of a good synthesis that incorporates sources pretty well. So ultimately, by the time you leave the session, you should understand the difference between summary and synthesis, and you should have an idea about how to incorporate both into a literature review. So features of a good summary, um, and I call this a kind of um, pre-writing exercise because before you actually engage in synthesizing, it's really helpful uh, if you create summaries. So naturally, then the next question is, well, what constitutes a good summary? So a good summary is accurate, concise, and objective. Right? So by accurate, I mean that it represents the information correctly, um, that you're making sure that you're not adding anything or taking away anything uh, from the original source. Um, it's concise, meaning it's short, sweet, to the point. No need to create long convoluted sentences or fluff them up for no reason. Um, ideally, a summary is about four to five sentences, but it can actually be a lot shorter than that. It can be um, half of a sentence that you're incorporated into a larger sentence, um, or it can be maybe one to two sentences on its own, uh, depending on the context. And then a good summary is objective. Right? So when you write a summary, you're not inserting a specific tone of any kind. Um, you're not necessarily praising what the author said. You're not um, arguing against it or disparaging it either. You're trying to be as objective as possible when you um, sort of convey the information or the thoughts of the author. So there's sort of three simple steps, or I shouldn't say simple, but um, there are three quick steps um, for writing a good summary. First, you ideally would read the source more than once. I know that in this busy world, that's not always uh, possible, but if you can read it more than once, and while you're reading a source, pay special attention to the introduction, the topic and transition sentences and the conclusion. Um, these are specific places where you're gonna get a lot of signposting or signaling to the, the argument and to the writer's logic, um, particularly when it comes to those topic sentences and the transition sentences or linking words. Um, those really help you follow along with the direction of the author's thinking. And they're going to help you identify key takeaways from the piece. So then once you've identified those key takeaways, you're going to want to jot them down 
either um, in phrases or keywords, or you can do it in, in whole sentences or whatever works for you. And then finally, you want to organize those uh, takeaways. If you haven't already, put them in complete sentences um, and then organize those sentences into a way where they're logically connected and it makes sense for a reader, right? So a way that a reader can see and follow the thoughts of the original author. And the easiest way to do this is using cohesive devices, otherwise affectionately called linking words. So then when you wanna incorporate a summary, um, you really wanna think about it in two distinct ways. So first there's the source level, and then there's the subject level. Um, so at a source level, we're thinking about the relevant you know, key points of the source itself of an article. Right? But at a subject level, we're thinking about how a literature review or even just the synthesis as a whole, right? it does give a reader a kind of summary in the sense that it's an overview of the knowledge in a given discipline about a particular subject. So I'm not saying that synthesis and summary are the same thing. They're not. Um, but what I am saying is that implicitly, the reader will walk away with a summary of the knowledge in a given discipline after or about a specific subject after reading your summary. Um, so at the source level, try and think about summarizing as an exercise where you're giving your reader context for an upcoming analytical point. Um, so the summary should function as this thing that's telling your reader or answering uh, for your reader a W question, right? So that who, what, when, where, why, how, those questions that require a certain level of analysis at this level of writing. Um, and a summary should be selective in a literature review. So you're not just including everything that you think is relevant, right? You're only including the takeaways or the material that you think is relevant for the main idea or for the research question you're trying to answer, okay? Uh, so I know that might feel really abstract, right? All the things I'm saying. So let's look at an example. Um, if you're going to incorporate uh, a source into your synthesis, the summary wouldn't be as long as what you see here in the first example. Um, but I have it fleshed out just so you can see what a strong, uh, concise, accurate, objective summary looks like. Um, so it says in the article, why doesn't GM sell crack? Michael Moore argues that companies need to be regulated so that they do not take actions that hurt the community or the environment. He explains that many people believe that companies should have the right to do whatever will make the most money. However, he disagrees with this philosophy. He gives the example of selling crack, which would be very profitable for companies, but bad for the consumers and community. This example shows how the government does make some laws to restrict companies and protect society. Moore points out that most Americans agree that a company should not be able to sell crack just to make a profit. Therefore, he argues, we might extend this reasoning to other harmful actions, such as polluting the environment or treating workers unfairly. Moore believes that companies should be restricted from committing actions that hurt society. So this is a summary from obviously a much longer article that clearly states what the thesis or the objective of the original author is that get that sort of uh, hones in on the key example the author uses to advance or expand his point um, and then ends by answering sort of in this implicit so what question, right? So what, why did the author make the claims that he did? Well, because the entire point of the piece was that he believes companies should be restricted from committing actions that hurt society. So if you were actually using uh, this source uh, in your literature review or in your synthesis, 
obviously it wouldn't be that long. So you might condense it to something like what you see near the bottom of the slide, which is just two sentences, right? So there is, however, a, a subset of scholars that believe companies should not be able to do whatever they want for profit. Practices that harm the community, like selling crack, are objected to by community members and legislated by the government. Such scholars argue that regulation can be reasonably expanded to other harmful actions. Essentially saying the same thing as this longer summary, right, but you'll notice this one is framed in a way where it's obviously being incorporated into a synthesis where you can put it in communication with other sources, right? So it would be much shorter. So when you synthesize something, you create something new by combining existing parts. Um, and a literature review in itself is a kind of synthesis. Um, so the, the Utah State University Library has this really uh, wonderful video they've made. So I would like for us to watch it together. Uh, hopefully you can hear the sound. An important part of writing a literature is like synthesis. But what is synthesis? Well, synthesis is kind of like a puzzle. It requires you to put together different pieces of research from multiple sources to form a new picture. Depending on how you organize the pieces, the story you tell will look a little different. The process. Hey, you all, sorry, I just want to do a sound check really quick. Can you put a one in the chat if you can hear it clearly without echo? Great. Okay, perfect. Turn on subtitles. Okay. So, just a second. Depending on how you organize the pieces, the story you tell will look a little different. The process of synthesis goes farther than just summarizing sources or even comparing and contrasting multiple sources, beyond even mere critiques of sources. When synthesizing, you are not just direct quoting other authors without using your own voice. It requires you critically analyze the literature by determining major themes, strengths, weaknesses, and critical gaps. Ultimately, you engage in synthesis to make your own point and add to the conversation. As you read article after article for your literature review, you should start to see the conversations surrounding your topic. Ask yourself, what are some of the common themes or subtopics that keep appearing in the articles I'm reading? Make note of these conversations or main ideas because this will help you organize your lit review. Instead of organizing your lit review source by source, like in an annotated bibliography, synthesis requires you to organize idea by idea. What is the conversation surrounding the main idea? To really know that conversation, you need to have looked at it from multiple perspectives or sources. You need to evaluate each source and then ask yourself, how does each source relate to my research question? Jot down those thoughts as you go. The sources you choose to include, your analysis, and how you organize them in a meaningful way make your literature review unique. This means you're developing your own understanding of the literature and explicitly stating what it means to your research. A helpful tool you can use to engage in synthesis is a research matrix, which helps you begin to organize by idea and then add your own thoughts as you read articles. If you need help with your literature review, ask a library. And even though that wasn't made by Agnes Scott, the point still stands that you can indeed ask a library for assistance with any of these things. So when we're synthesizing, we're combining existing parts. Like I cannot state that enough. Um, and you wanna do that by making it clear what the logical relationship is between the sources. So you're asking yourself, what is a holistic view of these sources reveal? So think of a synthesis, right, as a kind of middle ground that you're establishing between summary and a critique or evaluation or analysis of the relevant sources. So your aim is to communicate something new, okay? Um, you're really looking for a space to say something, to say what you think about 
the topic, the field, the state of play, however you want to say it. Um, and so a good way to approach this is to think about synthesis as if it's a conversation, because it is. Right? It's, a, it's a layered conversation. Each source in your synthesis is contributing to your understanding, of course, but more importantly, based on why we're here, your reader's understanding of the research problem. So you want to think about how the conversation is between the research articles themselves, you and the research, you and the audience, and the audience and the research. Right? So there are multiple sites of communication here to navigate. Um, and so you can manage this layered flow of new communication or this layered conversation, uh, even though it might seem daunting. Um, you just kind of have to sort of take your time, read the sources well, really look at what is related, look at what is contrasting and really figure out how exactly what you're seeing in the sources relate to your research question. Okay. So a good synthesis will combine elements of sources, describe how the sources converse with each other, show your reader how ideas are related or how they overlap. And ultimately a good synthesis is gonna reveal a gap or gaps um, where you are going to add to the discussion. So the steps for synthesis, um, really three, I've sort of distilled them down into three. Um, so first you wanna read, um, please don't skip over this. You know, it can be really tempting, especially when, if you're tired or really busy, but you have to read closely, you have to read carefully um, and then summarize the main idea of the text. So ideally you already would have engaged in some summary before you're approaching the synthesis stage. But if you haven't, now's the time to summarize. You're gonna make special notes of the similarities, contradictions, and any questions that are not addressed by the source. Right? If there is something that you wish the source would talk about, but it didn't, that also might be a really great thing to explore later on in your synthesis and in your paper. So you can do this using a synthesis matrix, um, uh, and I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, but after you've carefully read and made note of these things, you'll want to then organize your sources. This is perhaps the heart and soul of writing a good synthesis. Right? So you want to organize things based on subtopics, related ideas that you're noticing, or even contradictions um, and themes. And you also want to organize the sources based on the conventions in your discipline. Um, so some organizational methods make sense in some disciplines, while in other disciplines it might make no sense, right? So some disciplines may favor a chronological order, right, based on time. Other sources may, or other disciplines may want you to organize sources based on a theme or thematic content. So please abide by what is normal or what is expected in your discipline first and foremost, and then within those parameters, figure out the related ideas or subtopics and organize it accordingly. So you can ask yourself questions like, what sources can be grouped together to create arguments for your research question? Or alternatively, you could ask, what research question can you create based on certain groupings of sources? Okay. Then after you organize your sources, you'll outline your synthesis and then write. So when you're outlining the structure, I recommend that you write out each topic sentence and then you assign specific sources to the paragraph right? um, and then sketch out how that paragraph is going to illuminate your contributions later in the paper or later in the synthesis. Um, as you are planning out how to write this uh, or how to structure your synthesis, I think it's useful to consider using signal phrases. So sentence phrases like much of the literature suggests or the literature agrees that or um, a subset of scholars have suggested that. Right? So these signal phrases let your reader know 
Now you're about to give some kind of survey of um, thought about a given topic. Okay. So this is, or these are the two examples of the synthesis matrix that I mentioned. Um, you can make this, you know, in a spreadsheet or on a Google Doc, um, but no matter what, you always would make sure to write out the specific name of the source so you can keep track of the source that you're working with at the time. And then you might uh, just jot down notes about what the main idea for the, of the source is or the themes you see in a source. And then once you've got all of your sources organized using this matrix, you're in a really, really good position to write your synthesis. Um, so for the sake of time, I won't read this synthesis example too closely, um, but I will sort of pay attention or highlight the analysis part of it. Um, so this is a sample synthesis from the University of Oregon Library, um, and it's about Taylor Swift uh, and her decision a few years ago to remove her music from Spotify. Um, of course, it caused quite a stir, right? And so a lot of people were writing about it. Um, so this synthesis uses quite a few sources and puts them in conversation together really well. And it does that by uh, framing um, each source before um, the quote or the source material is tossed out there. Um, so in the introduction paragraph, like we've we've got this really strong sense of tone and purpose of the synthesis. Uh, there's a juxtaposition here between fans being surprised and Spotify being surprised and Taylor Swift saying, well, this was really predictable because I told you I would do this, right? Uh, and the source itself reveals that juxtaposition. Um, so it's a really expert use of the source material. Then in the second paragraph, we've got a strong topic sentence that really makes space for the sources to converse with each other. Um, and then the content itself that is selected from the source, the quotes in this case that are selected, are framed really well using these different linking um, sort of strategies, right? So according to Swift, or although those around her are grateful, um, however, this other person argues that dot, 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 right? So um, the sentence is set up in a way where logically we're able to follow the thinking, right? Framed by the topic sentences and these other sentences. And then the final paragraph incorporates sources to really carry the point home, right? The point being that artists are not paid enough via Spotify, therefore Swift's actions are justified. Um, so again, in the final paragraph, the sources are talking to each other and they're framed in such a way where I can understand why each source was chosen. Like I understand that one source might have been chosen to, co to contradict Swift's claim. And then another source may have been chosen to support something that Swift, Taylor Swift said. Right? So that's what I mean by conversation. So I'll leave this for glancing a few seconds. If you'd like, feel free to take a screenshot of it. I know that that was super fast, um, but the skill builders are supposed to be less than 30 minutes and I want to honor that. So if you need help with synthesis or if you have any questions about synthesis or summary, or writing your literature review, you can visit the library and speak to a librarian or email library at agnescott.edu, or you can visit a CWS tutor or email your questions to cws at agnescott.edu, and then we'll work on finding a tutor that can assist you. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, and I want to see if there are any questions because I know that that was very, very quick. Questions? 
questions or feel free to make any comments about your experience trying to synthesize as you write your literature, if you triumphs or setbacks, anything like that. Um, I guess I can say I've been having trouble getting my synthesis from the matrix into the lit review. So seeing your examples of how you would put the synthesis in writing in the lit review, that was very helpful. It's given me a lot of ideas. Great. That's, that's all my teacher heart really wants. <laughs> um, I saw a question in the chat. Thank you, Kendall. Uh, so Jayla, do you get access to these slides to refer to in the future? I can. So um, the recordings are all going to be sort of compiled and they'll live on a library, a section of the library website. So not only could I send you the slides, but I they also in the near future, you can watch the whole recording. Yeah, no problem. Uh, if you all, if whoever wants to indulge me, could you put one thing in the chat that you learned today that was useful? Alternatively, something you wish you would have learned. Synthesizing is much more than summarizing, how to organize between the two. Nice steps. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I find it, it might feel a lot more doable seeing that some steps sort of explicitly uh, written out. Yeah, how the sources converse with each other. That is the, these are the main takeaways. Um, I couldn't really ask for anything more. You all are, you all are on it. You like the example of how it should be written out. Great. Yeah, if you want me to send you the slides, uh, you can put your email in the chat and I can send them to you. So you'll have them between now and when the recordings are released. Um, and if you don't have any more questions, or if you are not interested in sort of chatting or sticking around, you're definitely free to go. Um, I will stop the recording here.